In this video, you'll learn how to build a supervisor team in Flowwise. And at a high level, what this means is we have this supervisor node, which will use an LLM to figure out which worker to call next. We will then use conditional routing to call the next worker, and each of these worker nodes would have a unique set of instructions that it needs to execute. And we can assign specialized models to each of these workers. Once the worker completes, it will provide some feedback to the supervisor agent, and the supervisor will figure out who to call next. Then finally, we'll get a summary of everything that was done along with the final solution. Let's go ahead and build this. From the agent flows menu, let's click on add new. Then let's save our flow. Let's give it a name like software development team. And of course, you can create any team you want. Then let's start by adding our supervisor node. So under add nodes, let's add an LLM node. Then let's connect these two. And let's double click on the LLM node and rename it to supervisor. Then for the model, I'm going to use chat open AI. And then I'll select my credentials. And for the model, let's use GPT 4.1. All right, then I'm also going to set a message, specifically the system message. And then for this message, let's say, you are a supervisor tasked with managing a conversation between the following workers a software engineer, and a code reviewer. Given the following user's request, respond with the worker to act next. Each worker will perform a task and respond with the results and status. When finished, respond with finish. Select strategically to minimize the number of steps taken. Cool, let's save this. We'll enable memory as we want the supervisor to have a view of the conversation history. And that's all we have to do for now. So let's save this flow and let's test it. In the chat window, let's say something like build a party planner app. And our supervisor is responding with software engineer. Now we want to route the flow down different paths, depending on who should be called. For that, we can use a condition node. So let's add a new node and let's add the condition node. Let's attach this to the supervisor. And also I'm going to add a sticky so, so we can keep track of what this flow is doing. So just above supervisor, let's say, decide on who to call next. These stickies can be very useful for keeping these flows organized. Right, now let's have a look at this condition node. We can use the condition node to look at values within this flow and then decide what to do next. Now, as you saw in the chat window, the supervisor node produced the value software engineer. So what we could do is simply look at the response that was produced by the supervisor and then decide on the way forward. But there's always a risk with trusting the values that an LLM produces. It might give you this exact answer or some variation of it. So the best practice is to implement some guardrails to force the model to give us exactly the values that we want. This is a cool little trick that will help you take your agent flows to the next level. What we can do is open up our supervisor node and then scrolling down, look for this JSON structured output section. We can use this JSON output structured section to force this node to provide output in a predictable and structured way. And what we want is the next worker that should be called. We can give this any name we want, I'll simply call this next. And for the type, we can select string, number, boolean, etc. Now we want the model to have a fixed list of values that it's allowed to respond with. So let's select enum, and this simply means an enumerated list of values. And this will force the model to only respond with one of these values. So these could be something like software for the software developer, comma, reviewer, and finally, finish. So our model will have a look at our system prompt, where we instruct it to either respond with software engineer or code reviewer, or with finish and it will intelligently map those values to one of these enum values in this list. And for the description, let's simply say the next worker to act. All right, so let's stop there and let's actually test this. So let's save the flow and let's say, I'm actually going to reset this and let's send our instruction again. And now if we have a look at the supervisor node and if we look at the output, we're now getting this JSON object back with a property called next. And now it's only returning this one word 
called software, which was in that list of enum values. So this means the condition node can now look at that specific value and then take the user down that path. I'm going to rename this node to check next worker. We can leave the type as string and for the value, we can access all the variables in this flow by entering double curly braces, then scrolling down, we can go to node outputs and grab the output from the supervisor. So we're getting the output from the supervisor, but on the supervisor's output, we actually only want to get access to that next property. And there's really no nice way to access that property using this approach. So what we'll do instead is use flow state. It's just a way more elegant and clean solution. If you're new to flow state, then you might want to check out my dedicated video on flow state first and then come back to this one. But I do think you'll still be able to follow along. This is not that bad. All we want to do is store that next value in a container or variable that's available to the entire flow so that we can easily get access to it. The way we do that is within the start node, we have this flow state section. Let's add a new variable to flow state, which we can call next. And initially this value will just be blank. So let's close out of the start node. And now within the supervisor node, when we scroll down, we have the section where we're creating the structured output that has a key called next. Now what we want to do is store the value from next in that flow state variable. Thankfully, that's very easy. At the bottom of this node, we have this update flow state section. Let's simply click on add update flow state. Then when we click on this, we can see all the variables that's available in the state. So let's select next and let's set its value to double curly braces. And now we can select from this current node's output, or you can now see this next property. And this is available because of the structured output. Let's select this value. And if we test this, Let's just paste in this exact same prompt, like so. We still don't get any response, that's fine. But if we have a look at the process flow now, we can expand the supervisor node, and now you'll see something new. We can see in the output that we're getting this structured output with this next property, and we can also see that state was updated with this value as well. So I just wanted to give you this little bit of an overview of how you can generate structured output, and then assign those structured output values to state variables. What's cool about flow state is that any node in this flow can now access those state values. Let's open up this condition node, and then for value one, let's open up our curly braces, and if we scroll down, we will not use the output from the supervisor, but instead, we now get this flow state section, and this gives us access to all of the properties in state like the next property. Cool, now we can say that if state.next is equal to, and let's say software, then we want to go down a certain path. Let's add another condition, and this time we want to say that if the state is equal to, what did we call it, reviewer, so let's go back to our condition node, and let's say that if flow.state.next is equal to, the reviewer, then we'll go down the second path, and for everything else, we'll simply go to the finish path, which we don't have to specify. You'll notice on this condition note, we now have three paths. This will be software, this will be reviewer, and the final one is for everything else, which will simply take us to the finish worker. So let's move on to setting up our worker nodes. Under add node, let's add another LLM, and of course, you're more than welcome to use agent nodes as well. The main difference being that agents are able to call tools, where LLMs are mostly used to generate content or create structured data from unstructured data. Let's simply use an LLM. So let's open up this node. Let's rename this to software engineer, like so. And then for the model, I'll just use OpenAI models. So let's select my credentials. Then I'll just use GPT 4.1. Right, for the system message, I'm going to keep this super simple. I'm just going to say, so this should be good enough for the model to understand which technologies are involved. Of course, you can say something way more specific than this, but what I want to do is tell this worker that it needs to follow the instructions 
provided by the supervisor node. Now we haven't implemented the instruction solution yet, but I'm just going to add this to the system prompt for now. So let's say, follow the instructions provided by the supervisor node. Let's keep memory enabled. This is actually a really cool feature in Flowwise. Each of the nodes in this flow will have access to the conversation history. So each of these workers will have a view of the current state of this conversation and act accordingly. Then let's also append a message at the bottom of the conversation. And this will include the supervisor's instructions. So let's say supervisor instructions. And now we have to grab the instructions from somewhere which we don't have yet. So what we can do is add a new state variable. So below next, let's add instructions, which will leave empty initially. Then in the supervisor node, let's scroll down to the structured output section and let's add another value here called instructions. This is of type string. And for the description, the specific instructions of the subtask the next worker should accomplish. So our supervisor node will have a look at the conversation so far and formulate the instructions for the next worker. Then we also want to update our state with that value. So let's add another value down here. For the key, let's select instructions. And for the value, let's select output.instructions. Now let's open up our software engineer again. And now under supervisor instructions, Let's go to flow.state.instructions. Cool. We also want this first path to call the software engineer. And we should be able to test this already. Let's actually try this out. So I'm going to clear the chat. Let's pass in this prompt again. And of course, the software engineer was called. And it's busy generating the solution. And if we look at the response, we can see in our process flow that the software engineer was the final node to be called. And our software engineer generated all of this code. Now the next step is for the software engineer to call the supervisor node again. So the supervisor can decide on the way forward. So unfortunately we can't just connect the software engineer node to the supervisor. But what we can do instead is go to nodes and let's add the loop node. Then let's attach these two. Let's rename this node to loop to supervisor. And then under loop two, we can select any of the nodes in the flow. And what we want to do is loop back to the supervisor. We can also set the limit on how many times this loop is allowed to execute. All right, so I actually want to execute this again. So let's pass in that same prompt. And this time we should see that the software engineer will write its code. And shortly thereafter, it should loop back to the supervisor node. And then let's have a look at what the supervisor decides to do next. All right, looking at the process flow, we can see the supervisor was called initially. So it's decided the next node should be software and it's generated these instructions for the software engineer. All right, cool. So we can then see the software engineer was called, which would have generated the code and the loop to supervisor node was then called. And now we can see the supervisor was indeed called again. And if we look at its output, we can now see the state was updated to reviewer with specific instructions for the reviewer. So let's add our reviewer node. I'm simply going to copy this one. Then let's rename it to code reviewer. I'll just use the same model and for the system prompt. And I'll simply paste in this prompt. If you don't know how to write prompts, you can also click on this magic wand button and describe the role of the agent over here. So we could say something like a code reviewer that checks whether code is of an acceptable quality and not missing any features. You can hit generate, and this will generate a pretty good system prompt that you can probably just use out of the box. And as for the software engineer, we'll simply append the supervisor's instructions at the end. All right then, let's also add a loop node. So I'll simply copy this one. Let's attach it to the code reviewer. Let's also connect this condition node to the reviewer as well, like so. Let's go ahead and test this. So I'll clear the chat. Let's send our prompt. We can see the software engineer was called and it then looped back to the supervisor, which then called the code reviewer. The code reviewer then called the supervisor again. 
which then called the software engineer. And then we went back to the supervisor. We did a code review. And then it stopped at this point. And I'm assuming that's because the state was now changed to finish. And the instructions say, the review confirms that the refined data model and MVP features are complete, clear, and ready for implementation. All right, cool. So let's add our final worker then. I'll simply copy this node. Let's connect our final path to this one. Let's rename this guy to generate final answer. And for this node, we don't need a system prompt either. We'll simply use the conversation history to formulate a final response. Let's clear this input message and let's simply say, given the above conversation, generate a detailed solution developed by the software engineer and code reviewer. Include the full code, improvements, and review. And that should be it. Let's save this. And finally, let's give our software development team a real try. Let's pass in our prompt and let's sit back and watch our team do its thing. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more FlowWise content. All right, I can see a response streaming through. So we'll just give this a second to complete. All right, and having a look at the final result, we can see that this is a detailed solution, integrates the implementation and improvements suggested by the code reviewer. And then it includes all of these. And of course, we can see all the source code as well. And at the bottom, we can see a summary of the reviews. If you would like to learn more about using flow state in FlowWise, then check out my dedicated video over here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.